morning. I'd like us to stand for prayers, please. And while you're standing, I just want to say to my year 11, I did come out of retirement to teach you, and I am so happy today because God has blessed you. Let's bow our hands. Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you this morning for your goodness and for your mercy. We ask of you that you would be with our children. They are graduating today, Lord. Father, I remember them in year eight, and I always prayed for them. We had good times together. And I'm asking you to help them to remember as they go forward into a new field, may they remember to strive for excellence, May they remember to pray always. May they remember to be like Daniel, to stand up for what is right. And to be like Esther, to have courage to stand up. Help them too also, Lord, to remember that even if they're walking through the fiery furnace, you are walking with them because they will have challenges along the way. Bless all of us today. May we enjoy the rest of the program as you allow the Holy Spirit to dwell in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, everyone. I want to take this opportunity to welcome all of you to Standard School Graduation. God has been good to us. Our children, has endured, they have endured a lot. They spent a long time in lockdown, so they have not had much time in school because a long time was spent in lockdown, but we thank God that he has taken them down the road where they're finished and they're moving on. May God be with you and may God bless you. I want to welcome all of us. I pray that we will have a good time and I trust that the Spirit of God will continue to linger in our presence today. Just in case, just in case we're not planning a fire alarm, but who knows, just in case a fire alarm goes off, the fire exit is, 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 is right to the left, you go through the main door, and you go straight down, and because school is out, we are meeting in the car park down by the bottom. So just in case, and if you're sitting on this side, you go through the door on the left, and you head towards the car park at the bottom. That is our meeting point. If you need to use the toilets, the toilets are down through the door, to the door, and then when you go down through the door, the gentleman, it's on your left, and for the female, it's on your right. If you are disabled and need to use the toilet, just start, the staff members could stand so that they can identify you. If you are disabled and you need to use the toilet, you need to, staff members, could you stand, please? If you find one, you just raise your hands and one of us will see you and then we'll take you to the disabled toilet because it's located inside the building. God bless you. Have a good day. Say good morning. Uh, all welcome. My name is Mr. James, the head teacher of Crowd, the head teacher of Stanford Secondary School. Um, and welcome to effectively my first face to face graduation with our wonderful year 11, near six form students. I just want to, to really say thank you very much for attending. And before I talk about the graduation itself, a reminder that we do have a, a baptism that starts at 11.30 today. And you're more than welcome. Thank you very much. It's great to see so many parents and members of the local community here. Thank you students again for being patient and apologies that we've started slightly late. And, and welcome back to our incredibly talented, um, diligent, motivated, enthusiastic and, and certainly uh, intelligent Year 11 students. They have worked so hard over the last few years. Throughout lockdown, of course, remember that they're the first um, here to take these face-to-face -face or written assessments. It's been uh, a rocky path, should we say. It's been very, very challenging. But as a head teacher, I just want to say on behalf of all the staff, to parents in particular, how proud we are. Because we do feel that they are, are reaching their full potential and they're going to go out into the real world soon. And we feel that they are these global citizens that we wanted of them. They are prepared for... Uh, six more, and we feel that they are going to be 
incredible representatives of, of Stamford School. So can I just say, on behalf of all the staff, how proud I am, Year 11 students, as to how far you have come on what an incredible journey, in particular with myself, who started Stamford in November 2019. Of course, that's been a, quite a few years now where I've seen you grow, I've seen you flourish into, into leaders. You really have. So many of you have knocked on my door. Um, you've raised concerns. There were concerns, there were always concerns, and you've given me advice. And we've had many conversations as to how we can provide a better education for you, but what I've seen is a very mature, professional uh, approach in, in your relationship that you've built with, in particular, our younger students, but also with staff, is something to be uh, commended for. So I just want to say thank you very much. Do, do enjoy the graduation. to welcome our BUC President and Chair of Governors, uh, who's going to do a speech for us, Pastor Eglin Brooks. To Mr. James, the uh, senior leadership team, teachers, 
staff, organisers, past teachers I see also. <laughs> Evangelist Patrick, uh, certainly you could have spoken here this morning. Governors, representatives from the PTA, pupils, don't they look fantastic? Secondary leaders of school, parents, and I'm glad that so many of you have decided to come out and support the students this morning. A special thank you, and I think most importantly to the graduating class of 2022.
I wonder if you've had some dreams in your life. Dreams that have caused you not to be comfortable with where you are and what you have achieved. But dreams that really suggest to you that whatever you're doing, you can do so much better. I wonder if you've had some of those dreams. I know your parents have told you, and I know your parents have challenged you. Uh, but have they passed those dreams on to you? Or have you had some dreams of your own? What will you be like in a few years' time? What will you achieve in this life? What will you accomplish having gone to Stanborough School? How will you make a difference to this world? I wonder if you really have some dreams. Deep down in Joseph's life, there was a dream, and despite what happened to him, he never lost sight of his dreams. We need some dreamers like that today. Yes, his dreams were shaken, but he kept on dreaming. Uh, I was listening to uh, Sir Brendan Rogers uh, talk about his first meeting with a young man called Mohammed. Uh, this man, Mohammed, uh, ran in the 20, uh, sorry, 2008 Olympics in the 10,000 meters. He finished 17th place and he had the audacity to knock on the door of the commentator Brendan Rogers, and said to Brendan Rogers, hey, aren't you going to interview me? Brendan Rogers replied, hey, we only interview people who finish in the top three. But Mo Mohammed said, uh, one day I'm going to win this race, and you are going to interview me. Well, Mohammed, came back four years later to the Olympics and he ran an outstanding race and he finished first in the 10,000 meters in 2012. And Brendan Rogers was the one that was running him down trying to get him to interview him. Mohammed was born in um, Magadeshu in Somalia. Nine years old, he was trafficked to this country. He was forced to do some labor at his own home. I know that doesn't happen to you. Your, your parents don't ask you to do too much work at home. Uh, he was sent to school at the age of 12 and he was told when he got to school that he should, be, he should tell the folks that he is a, a Somalian refugee. He is story is an interesting one because when he got to school and started to play football and started to run, his PE teachers recognized he had outstanding ability. And despite what happened to this young Muhammad, he never stopped dreaming. You will know Muhammad Mokhtar Jama Farah as a Sir Mo Farah, uh, that long distance runner the best long distance runner Britain has ever produced, uh, winning some, I believe it was 10 gold medals or gold championships. Uh, a successful career that outshines every runner in England. Uh, you will know him because he had this mindset that despite what happened to him, he should not be satisfied with where he was. It was more important for him to keep dreaming. I say it's not and that it doesn't matter where you are from, what your background is, or what people have done to you in the past, how your teachers have treated you, how the organization have led you. It doesn't matter how your friends have interpreted you or helped you. What matters more is that dream that God has placed in each one of your hearts. Not to be satisfied with where you are, but to do so much more than anyone around you ever thought possible. Dream. There are three things I want to leave with you this morning. Even though we live in a world where life happens to us, our lives are always shaped by our dreams. Secondly, our dreams can be sidetracked 
derailed, devastated, damaged by people, even those who say they love you. But I dare you to keep on dreaming. Thirdly, God always has a way of accomplishing his God-given dreams for our lives. Our lives are impacted by people who shape us, broken by people who hate us, and strengthened by people who love us. Guard your dreams, jealously, graduating class. Guard your dreams, pupils, stand up. Spend time with people who help you grow. Don't waste your life minutes with people who are always putting you down. I dare you to dream, even when you don't get the grades that you wanted. I dare you, dream. Even when your family turns against you because of your weird dreams. I dare you to dream. Even when you find you are neglected by your peers because of your unique dreams. I dare you to dream. Even when people lie about you and put you in a situation that will almost make you lose your soul. I, I dare you to dream. When people break their promises to you and forget about you and leave you as some relegated piece of ancient mess. I dare you to dream. Until that dream that you have with God takes hold of your life and changes you and makes you the kind of person God originally wanted you to be. I dare you to keep on dreaming. Throughout my 
my five days of being in this school. They pushed me to do my best and they always helped me when I needed help. I don't want to single out any teachers, but I want to especially say thank you to Mrs. Mabeno. Um, I've known her since I was about five years old when she taught me Spanish in the primary school. And I just want to say thank you for always pushing me to do my best and always encouraging me. I am very grateful for the experience that I've been able to have here at Stanford Secondary School. I'm grateful for the teachers that took their time to help me with the struggles that I had and to help me excel. They always went out of their way to show me that I can be better. And I also really appreciate my parents. I appreciate my mom every morning driving me to school and the encouragement that she gave me with doing my homework, with revising, and in general, becoming more independent in this phase of my life. I've been a student at Stanford Central School for five years now. I joined in year seven, and today is my last day of year eleven. And I would like to thank all the staff and the teachers for helping me in my journey to finish Stanford School. Um, I would like to thank Ms. Tussie for making all this interesting, um, Ms. Anderson for helping me with chemistry. I'd also like to thank Ms. Rivera for not giving up on me in Spanish, even though I was really bad, bad at it at first. And I would also like to thank Ms. Gabriel and Ms. Benton for helping me with that, which I really don't like. Um, and I would also like to thank Mr. Popper as well for helping me when I forgot my password. I would also like to thank Mr. Allen and Mr. Brown for teaching me geography. Um, I don't know the reality. I would also like to thank Mr. Anderson who didn't teach me, but I really enjoyed speaking to him quite a bit and the encouragement that he gave me for my exam to do. Um, that's what I can think of for now, but I really, I'm really thankful and grateful to all the teachers who helped me during my time in Stanford. I would like to say thank you for the whole of um, Stanford School. I would like to thank its staff and everyone in, um, in it. I'd like to thank them for making Stanford School, um, or my five years in it, um, really well and really enjoyable. I'd like to also thank um, the teachers and the staff for um, making my education good and that it went really well. Thank you. Gratitude is a powerful thing, and it's my honour to give gratitude to those that have helped me throughout this tough journey at this school. I want to say thank you to my teachers, my headmaster, my parents, and my fellow colleagues. It's been hard, but we made it. Thank you. I would like to thank my parents for bringing me to Stanborough for almost 40 years. They made such a huge sacrifice for my education, and I'm very grateful for what they've done. I also like to thank all the teachers for pushing us to do better and to strive for better goals in our education so that we can be successful when we grow up. Your GCSEs, 
you you'll have a lot of fun after the lift. Current, current year nines and year eights, as you're moving on, and year nine, you've already had one year in your basically like your GCSE years. And I just want to, you to remember to um, focus because the knowledge which you learn in these classes, you need it for your GCSEs. Lastly, year seven, even though your GCSEs are a little further away, it doesn't mean you can't still apply yourself and achieve now. Secondly, I want to encourage you to dream big and not let anyone stop you from being the best version of you. Don't look at others' achievements and compare them to your own. Strive to be, be your own best. Thirdly, friends who get upset when you win and achieve and will put you down because you achieve are not your friends. Friends who talk to you one day and ditch you the next are not your friends. Surround yourselves with good people because the people who you hang around with may affect how others see you. Lastly, I want you to all to remember to trust in God. No matter what happens in your life, I can guarantee you there's only one person you can depend on. That is God. So dream big, don't give up. Push yourself to be the best you can be because you can do all things through Christ because he gives you the strength. strike a thorn or rose, keep a going. If it hails or if it snows, keep a going. Ain't no use to sit and whine when the fish ain't on your line. Bait your hook and keep a trying, keep a going. When the weather kills your crop, keep a going. When you tumble from the top, keep a going. Suppose you're out of every dime, being so ain't any crime. Tell the world you're feeling prime. Keep a going. When it looks like all is up, keep a going. Drain the sweetness from the cup. Keep a going. See the wild birds on the wing. Hear the bells that sweetly ring. When you feel like sighing, sing. Keep a going. The Bible also says in Ecclesiastes 9 verse 11, the race is not to the swift, or the battle to the strong, nor does the food come to the wise, or wealth to the brilliant, or favour to the learned, but time and chance happen to see them all.
Next up, Susan Bell. And I felt, yes, I think 
God has sent me to, to the right place for my son. Um, through all the ups and downs over the years, the teachers have been there for us. I've knocked on your door so many times, spoken to you so many times. You have alleviated my fears and worries, tirelessly working for the, for the students, trying to push them, encourage them, make them feel that they can reach the, the heights they need to reach. You have given up your lunch times and your home times and been there always for the teachers, for the students, forgive me. In Hinduism, the teacher, the guru, is of the highest stature because he is placed there by God. And God has sent him to guide and see the journey and the path through life towards God himself. That is by the teacher. We, we bow down, down to the guru, the teacher, every single day. You, you play a very huge role in our lives as parents because we need you. But most of all for the students. And we, we will always remember you. You have worked with truth, love and compassion. Thank you is a very small word. But you will forever be in our hearts, and we will always be indebted and grateful to all of you. Thank you so much. Pleasure to stand in front of your 11 boys again to see you leaving school. Um, I, I just want to take this opportunity to wish you all the very best. You have um, worked through very difficult circumstances, particularly to go through the, your uh, main examination preparation years. You had to do that through COVID, but I'm sure that God will have rewarded you in the effort that you've put in and you will achieve what you deserve. At this moment in time, it, it, it falls on me to say thank you to, um, really let me start by saying thank you to the staff. Um, the staff have worked incredibly hard during um, what is, has probably been in the history of education a very, very difficult period of, of educating children through COVID. And uh, through those difficult times, you have persisted and you have given of your best, and so for that we want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to the parents, it's never a hard thing, it's never an easy thing rather, to um, bring children through. I've done it four times with my four children, and uh, we have a saying in the West Indian community, when they're small, they tangle your feet, and when they're older, they tangle your heart. And I, you have all of that to come. But I'm sure that your children have done you proud, so thank you for the effort that you have put in in raising your children to see this day. But it falls on me also. Thank you very much. It falls on me also to call Mr. James to come forward. Uh, his tenure comes 
put an end to that August 31st. But we want to, again, say thank you very much for leading us to a very difficult period. You came in September, initially with one year, and then you came back in August. standing as we pray. Lord, indeed, uh, we thank you for the days of our hearts. You are the master of this school. Amen. And we began by uh, pleading your presence, and indeed you have answered uh, our prayer. We had this beautiful session this morning. Father, once again, we want to lift the uh, year 11 uh, into your hands in a special way. Uh, we can rightly describe them as the COVID generation. And indeed, you have done wonders 
teaches are in their lives and in the lives of everyone here. Thank you the ups and downs you give them the tenacity and the endurance, the capacity to endure all the changes and uh, learning online and they've come to the end of their studies here. The last pastor, Bruce Chaitan, that they go on and, and dream on and to aspire to achieve great things both uh, in this life, but more importantly, uh, in the life to come. The world says, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and lose his or her all the soul? And so even as they are chief of God, I pray that they will put you first in everything that they do. Uh, your word said that we should seek your kingdom and his righteousness, and all the rest will be added. And so, Father, I pray that you will do so for us. We also thank you for the sacrifice and the patience of the parents who have gone through a lot of challenges, uh, mostly the financial ones, but through it all, they made these sacrifices. And I pray that uh, their, their investment in these wonderful young people uh, will bear fruit uh, for uh, this life, but as I say, Father, in the life to come. Thank you for all the stakeholders, the uh, board of government, the, those who are interested in the school, the friends of the school. We just pray that you will bless us all. Father, we also want to remember Mr. James in a special way as he leaves the board. I pray that you would bless him and, and guide his steps and his ways in everything he seeks to do. And I pray that the, the influence he experienced here I will live with him for the rest of his life. We just want to thank you, want to bless your name for answer prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.